for the chapter objectives students should be able to explain and differentiate different types of metal alloys which is ferrous and non-ferrous alloy meanwhile for lesson objectives at the end of the semester students should be able to apply and explain ferrous and non-ferrous alloys microstructure scrutiny mechanism and its applications polymery and advanced material structure as well as its properties Today we are going to look at on two topics which is ferrous alloy and non-ferrous alloy. Well basically a metal alloy by virtue of compositions are often grouped into two classes which are uh, ferrous and non-ferrous. Ferrous alloys are those in which iron is the principal constituent include steels and cast iron. These alloys and their characteristics are the first topic of discussion for today's lecture. Meanwhile for non-ferrous alloy uh, where all alloys that are not iron based will be treated next yeah so now let's look at on uh, the overall content of the metal alloy um ferrous uh, ferrous alloys or ferrous metal those in which ions is the prime constituent they are produced in larger quantities than any other metal type they are especially important as engineering construction materials they are widespread use is uh, accounted by three factors number one iron containing compound exists in abundant quantities within the uh, earth crust and number two metallic iron and steel alloys may be produced using relatively economical extraction refining alloying and fabrication techniques number three ferrous alloys are extremely versatile in that they may be tailored to have a wide range of mechanical and physical properties the principal uh, the principal disadvantage of many ferrous alloys is their susceptibility to corrosion um, so in this lecture, we will discuss on the compositions, microstructures and properties of the numbers of different classes of cis and cast ions. Um, a taxonomy classification scheme for the various alloys, uh, ferrous alloys can be, uh, uh, can be uh, looked at from uh, this uh, diagram over here. Okay, so now let's move on to um, uh, uh, types of materials or um, uh, alloys that falls under ferrous metals, which is cast iron. In general, cast ions are a class of ferrous alloys which with carbon contents above 2.14 uh, weight percent in practice however most cast iron contains between 3 to 4.5 weight percent of carbon and in addition with other alloying elements of course a uh, re-examination of the iron carbon phase diagram reveals that alloys within this composition range, composition range become uh, completely liquid at temperature between approximately 1150 and 1300 degrees C, yeah? uh, which is considered considering um, which is considered as lower than uh, steel those they are easily melted and um, easily to be casted furthermore uh, some cast irons are very brittle and casting is the most convenient fabrication technique and uh, cementite is the metal stable compound and under circumstances um, it can be made to um, uh, to decompose to form alpha ferrite and um, graphite um, the tendency to form graphite is actually regulated by the composition and rate of cooling. Graphite formation is produced or promoted by the presence of silicon in concentration greater than 1 weight percent. Also, um, slower cooling rates actually um, during solidification favors graph uh, graphitization or the formation of graphite. For most cast ions, the carbon exists as a graphite and both microstructure and mechanical behavior actually depends on composition and heat treatment. The most common uh, cast iron types are grey, nodular, white, malleable and uh, compacted uh, graphite. So the list can be seen from figure A, B, C together with its microstructure for these types of cast iron. And um for um grey cast iron the okay grey cast iron 
uh, the carbon and silicon contents actually varies from uh, 2 to 4 weight percent uh, exam approximately of the carbon uh, and 1 to 3 uh, weight percent respectively uh, for carbon and grey cast iron just now. Uh, for most of these cast iron, the graphite exists in the form of flakes which are normally surrounded by uh, by alpha ferrite or perlite matrix. The microstructure of a typical grey iron um, is shown in figure A over here. Because of these graphite flakes, a fractured surface takes, at, takes on a grey appearance, hence it becomes its name for grey cast iron. Meanwhile, for... Um, um, nodular or ductile cast iron um, adding a small amount of magnesium or cerium to the grey iron before casting produces a distinctly different microstructure and set of mechanical properties graphite is, uh, still forms but as nodular or sphere like particles instead of flakes this um, the resulting alloy is called ductile or nodular ion iron and a typical microstructure is shown um, in uh, figure b over here the metric phase surrounding this particle is either perlite or ferrite depending on heat treatment it is normally perlite for and uh, for cast piece however a heat treatment for several hours about uh, several hundred degrees c will yield a ferrite matrix um, as in um, um, as in this uh, photograph over here well casting are stronger and much more ductile than Greek as iron in fact ductile iron has mechanical characteristics approaching those of steels for example ferritic ductile ions have uh, tensile strength uh, ranging between 300 to 400 megapascal uh, ductility is from 10 to uh, 20 percent right? and the typical application for these types of materials include valves palm bodies uh, crankshaft gears and other automotive and mechanical uh, or machine components um, next is on uh, white cast iron for so uh, for low silicon cast iron and rapid cooling rates or uh, most of the carbon exists as cementite instead of graphite the fractured surface of this alloy has a white appearance and thus it is termed white cast iron so that's how the name being um, 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 being used for these types of uh, alloys an optical uh, um the photo micrograph over here this one a c uh figure c here showing the microstructure of white cast iron okay uh, thick sections may uh, have only a surface layer of white cast iron that was chilled during the casting process gray iron forms at interior regions white which cool more slowly as a consequence of large amount of cementite um fizz. White iron is extremely hard but also very brittle to the point of uh, being uh, being virtually unmachine unmachinable. It is um, it use is limited to application that necessitate a very hard and wear resistant surface with a higher degree of ductility. For example, a roller in uh, rolling mills and generally white cast iron is used as intermediary in production of yet another cast iron like malleable cast iron or malleable iron and uh, heating white iron at temperature between 800 to uh, 900 for a prolonged uh, a period of time in a neutral atmosphere causes a decomposition of a cementite forming graphite which exists in the form of cluster clusters or rosettes surrounded by ferrite and perlite matrix depending on the cooling rate um, the microstructure is similar to that of nodular iron which accounts for relatively high strength and appreciate and appreciably and appreciable ductility or malleability representative applications include connecting rods transmission gears different uh, refreshing cases for the automotive industry and also flange pipe fitting valve marine and other heavy duty um, services gray and ductile um, cast irons are produced in approximately the same amount however for white and malleable cast irons they are produced in smaller quantities
Now let's move on to uh, carbon steel. Uh, steel are steel or carbon steel that may contain um, appreciable concentrations of other alloying elements. There are thousands of alloys that have different composition uh, and or heat, or heat treatment. The mechanical properties are sensitive to the content of carbon, which is normally less than one uh, percentage, one weight percent. Uh, some of the more more some of uh, common steels are classified according to carbon concentration, like um, low, medium, and high carbon steel. Um, subclasses also exist within each group according to the concentration of other alloying elements. Plain carbon steel uh, contain only residual concentrations of impurities other than carbon and a little manganese. For alloy steels, more alloying, more alloying, uh, alloying elements are intentionally added in specific concentration. Now let's look at um, one by one. Um, for low carbon steel, um, of all the different steels, those produced in the greatest quantities fall within the low carbon um, classification. These uh, generally contain less than about 0.25 weight percent of carbon and are responsive to heat treatments intended to form martensite. site. Strengthening is accomplished by cool work. Microstructure consists of ferrite and perlite constituent. As a consequence, these alloys are relatively soft and weak but have outstanding ductility and toughness. In addition, there are machinable, wearable, and of all steel, uh, this, uh, these types of carbon steel are the less expensive to produce. Uh, example of applications include uh, uh, automobile body, uh, component body, structural shape like I-beam, channel, uh, angle iron, and sheets that are uh, used in pipe, uh, pipelines, uh, building, bridges, and tin cans. Another group of low carbon alloys are the um, high strength, low alloy HSLA steels, they call it. Um, uh, they contain other alloying elements um, such as copper, vanadium, nickel, and molybdenum in, combin in combination concentrations as high as 10 weight percent and possesses higher strength than the plain carbon steels. Most, uh, most may be strengthened by heat treatment, giving tensile stress, strength, atmosphere. The HLSA uh, the HSLA steels are more uh, resistant to corrosion and um, and the plain carbon steel which they have replaced in many applications where structural strength is critical um, hold on yeah okay so let's continue with uh, medium carbon steel I think I uh, for this slide I just summarized a little bit on medium carbon steel because um, the most important part is the low carbon steel and high carbon steel. Anyway, um, for medium carbon steel, the uh, the concentration of carbon is between zero point two five and zero point six or zero point three or uh, until zero point six weight percentage of carbon. These alloys may have be uh, may be heat treated by austenizing, quenching, and then tempering to improve the mechanical properties. They are most often utilized in the tempered condition, having microstructure of tempered martensite. The plain carbon steels have low hardenabilities and can be successfully heat treated only in very thin sections and with very rapid quenching rates. Additions of chromium, nickel, and molybdenum can improve the capacity of this alloy to be heat treated, giving rise to a variety of strength ductility combinations. These heat treated alloys are stronger than the low carbon steel but at a sacrifice of ductility and toughness. Applications include railways, uh, wheels and uh, tracks, gears, crankshaft and other machine parts and high strength structural components calling for a combination of high strength, wear resistance as well as toughness. So let's move on to um, high carbon steel. The high carbon steel normally um, uh, the percentage uh, of carbon content is more than 0 0.6 weight, uh, weight percentage of carbon. Um, there are the hardest, strongest and yet least ductile of the carbon steel. They are almost always used in hardened and tempered condition such as um, 
uh, wear resistant and capable of holding a uh, sharp cutting edge. The tool and dust are high carbon alloys, usually containing chromium, vanadium, tungsten and molybdenum. These alloying elements combine with carbon to form very hard and wear resistant carbide compounds. These steels are utilized as cutting tools and dust for forming and shaping materials as well as um, knives, razors, hex hexaw blades, springs and high strength wires. Um, the stainless steel are highly resistant to corrosion in a variety of environments, especially at especially uh, the ambient atmosp atmosphere. Their predominant alloying element is chromium. A concentration of at least 11 a percentage of chromium is required. Corrosion resistance uh, um, may also be enhanced by nickel and molybdenum, molybdenum additions. Stainless steel are divided into three uh, classes on the basis of predominant phase constituent of the microstructure, uh, which is martensite, ferrite, and austenite. Martensite stainless steel are capable of being heat treated in such a way that martensite is the prime micro constituent. Additions of alloying, alloying elements in significant concentration produce dramatic alteration in um, iron, uh, iron carbide phase diagram. For austenitic uh, stainless steel, the austenite uh, phase fill is extended to room temperature. Um, ferritic uh, stainless steels are composed of ferrite, um, alpha ferrite, um, uh, alpha ferrite phase, the austenite and ferritic ferritic stainless steel are hardened and strengthened by cold work because they are not heat treatable. Um, the austenite stainless steels are the most corrosion resistant because of high chromium contents and also high nickel additions whereby they produce in the largest uh, quantities. Both martensite and ferritic uh, stainless steels are magnetic. The austenite stainless steels are not. Some stainless steels are frequently used at elevated temperatures and in severe environments because they resist oxidation and maintain their mechanical integrity under such conditions. The upper temperature limit in oxidizing uh, atmosphere is about uh, 1000 degrees C. Equipment employing, employing, equipment employing uh, these, um, uh, these steels includes uh, uh, gas turbine, high temperature, uh, steam boilers, heating, heat treating uh, furnaces, aircraft, missiles, nuclear power generating units and so on and so forth. Um, now, let's move on to non-ferrous alloy. Steel and uh, other ferrous alloys are consumed in exceedingly large quantities because they have such a wide range of mechanical properties may be fabricated with relative uh, ease and are economical to produce. However, there are some distinct, uh, some distinct um, limitation uh, includes number one, a relative, uh, relatively high density, comparatively low electrical conductivity and number three, it has an inherent susceptibility to corrosion in some common environments. Thus, for many applications, it is, it, it is uh, advantageous or even necessary to use other alloy than have more suitable uh, property combinations. Uh, alloy systems are classified either according to the base metal or according to specific characteristics that a group of alloys can share. So in this topic, we will discuss the following metal and uh, alloy system, uh, which includes copper, aluminium, magnesium, and titanium alloys, which uh, uh, which also includes uh, the ref uh, refractory metals, um, um, refractory materials. I think for this section. Okay. Um, so now let's move on to um, uh, first types of non-ferrous alloy, which is aluminium. Aluminium and its alloys are characterized by a relatively low, a relatively, uh, low density, have 
high electrical and thermal conductivity and resistant to corrosion in some common environments, including the ambient temperature. Many of these alloys are easily formed by virtue of high ductility. This is the evidence by thin aluminum foil sheet into which the relatively pure uh, material may be rolled. Because aluminum has an uh, has FCC crystal structure, its ductility is retained even at very low temperatures. The mechanical strength uh, for aluminium may be enhanced by cold work and by alloying. However, both processes tend to diminish resistance to corrosion. Principal alloying elements include copper, magnesium, silicon, manganese, uh, and zinc. Non-heterotable alloys consist of single phase, for which an increase in, uh, in strength is achieved by solid solution strengthening. Others are rendered by heterotable uh, um, uh, has as uh, as alloying uh, as a result of alloying uh, generally aluminum alloys are classified as either a cast or rot composition for both types is designed by four digit numbers that is that is indicated indicates the principal impurities and in some cases the purity level for cast ions a decimal a decimal point is located between the last two digits after these digits uh, is hyphen and the basic temper designation is like a letter and possible and possibly uh, a one or two 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 one two three uh, digit number which indicates the mechanical or heat treatment to which the alloy has been subjected for example it has um an uh, an um it has a h f or o represent respectively as um, fabricated uh strain hardened and anil states t3 means that the alloy the alloy was solution heat treated could work and then naturally aged um, some common examples or applications for aluminum alloy includes aircraft structural parts, beverage canes, bus body, and automotive parts, and so on and so forth. Um, number two is copper uh, alloys or copper, copper and copper based alloys possessing a desirable combination of physical properties have been utilized in quite a variety of applications uh, since antique antiquity uh, an alloyed copper is so soft and ductile that it is difficult to machine also it has an almost unlimited capacity to be cold work furthermore it is highly resistant to corrosion in diverse environments including the ambient atmosphere seawater and some uh, industrial um, chemicals the chemical uh, the mechanical and corrosion resistant properties of copper may be improved by alloying most copper alloys cannot be hardened or strengthened by a heat treating procedure consequently co-work and solid solution alloying must be utilized to improve these mechanical properties the most common uh, copper alloys are brasses uh, for which zinc as a substitutional impurities is the pro uh, predominant alloying element some of the common brasses are yellow naval cartridge brass and uh, gilding metal and um, the examples include i mean the applications include uh, uh, cast of jewelry cartridge castings automotive radiators musical instruments electronic uh, packaging coins and so on and so forth the brands are alloys of coppers and several other elements including tin aluminum silicon and nickel these alloys are somewhat stronger than the brasses yet still have high degree of corrosion resistance um, number three is the uh, magnesium alloy. Perhaps the most outstanding characteristic of uh, magnesium is its density, which is the lowest of all the um, structural metals. Therefore, its alloy are used where lightweight is an important consideration, like in aircraft components. Magnesium has HCP crystal structure. It is very relatively soft and has a uh, low elastic modulus. At room temperature, magnesium and its alloy are difficult to deform. In fact, only small degree of cold work may be imposed without any link. Consequently, most fabrication is by casting or hot 
hot working at temperatures between 200 to uh, 250 degrees C. Magnesium, like aluminium, has a moderate, um, a moderate, moderately low uh, melting temperature. Chemically, magnesium alloys are relatively unstable and especially susceptible to corrosion in marine environments. On the other hand, corrosion or exude, uh, or exude, uh, or uh, oxidation resistance is uh, reasonably um, good in normal atmosphere. It is believed that this behavior is due to impurities rather than being an inherent characteristic of magnesium alloys. Fine magnesium powder ignites easily when heated in air. Consequently, care should be exercised when handling in uh, this kind of state. Um, these alloys, I mean, uh, magnesium alloys are classified into either cast or rock or rot, and some of them are uh, heat treatable. Aluminium, zinc, manganese, and some of the rare, rare earths are the major alloying elements. A composition, temper, designation scheme similar to that of aluminium alloys is also used. Furthermore, in the last several years, the demand for magnesium alloys has increased dramatically in a host of different industries. For many applications, magnesium alloys have been replaced engineering plastic that have uh, comparable densities in as much as the magnesium materials are stiffer, more recy uh, recyclable, re recyclable uh, and less costly to produce. For example, magnesium is new employed in a variety of handheld devices like chainsaws, power tools. Uh, uh, and meanwhile, in automobile like steering wheels, columns, frames, some transmission cases, and uh, and in audio visual com uh, camcorders, TV sets, cellular phone, laptops, computers, and so on and so forth. Uh, now let's move on to um, uh, uh, next materials for non-ferrous alloy, which is uh, titanium and its alloy, whereby the types of materials are relatively new engineering material materials that possess that poses uh, an extraordinary combinations of properties. The pure metal has a relatively low density, high melting point, and elastic modulus. Um, of 107 um, gigapascal. The titanium alloys are extremely strong. Room temperature tensile uh, strength can be as high as 1400 megapascal. Uh, they are attainable, uh, yielding remarkably uh, specific uh, strengths. Furthermore, the alloys are very uh, 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 high ductility, having high ductility and easily forged and machined. The major limitations of uh, titanium is its chemical reactivity with met other materials at elevated temperature. Uh, this property has necessitated uh, the development of non-conventional refining, melting and casting techniques. Consequently, titanium alloys are quite expensive. In spite of this um, high temperature reactivity, the corrosion resistance of titanium alloys at normal temperature is un unusually high. Uh, they are virtually immune to air, marine, and a variety of industrial environments. They are commonly utilized in airplane structures, space vehicles, and surgical plants, and in uh, the petroleum as well as chemical industry. Um, Last but not least is on the refractory materials, metals that are extremely um, metals that have extremely high melting temperatures are classified as the refractory metals. Included in this section are niobium, molybdenum, tungsten, and tantalum. Melting temperatures ranging um, between two, four, uh, six, uh, six, eight. A degree C for niobium and three four one zero uh, for tang uh, for uh, niobium, the highest melting temperature uh, of all metal for tungsten, with uh, the value of a three four one zero uh, degree C. Um, Interatomic bonding uh, in these metals is extremely strong, which accounts for the melting temperatures and, in addition, large elastic moduli and high strength and hardness 
at ambient as well as elevated temperatures. Um, the application of these metals are varied. For example, tantalum and molybdenum are alloyed with a stainless steel to improve its corrosion resistance. Molybdenum alloys are utilized for extrusion dust and structural parts in space vehicles. Um, X-ray tubes and welding electrodes employ a tungsten uh, alloys. Tantalum uh, is immune to chemical attack by virtually all environments at temperatures below 150 degrees C and frequently used in applications requiring such as corrosion resistant uh, materials. So uh, that would be all for today's lecture. I hope everybody uh, do understand uh, what are the topics uh, being delivered to you, being teached uh, for today. Uh, however, uh, if you still have any question related to the topics, you can contact me uh, in a group or in a WhatsApp group or in a Google Classroom. And that will be end for our uh, chapter 6 for this chapter. So um, in the next class, we are going to look at our new chapter, which is uh, chapter 7. And that will be all for today's lecture. Thank you very much for your kind attention and time. See you again in the next class. Okay, bye.